AP Biology, Chapter 17, From Gene to Protein, Part 2. Today we're going to learn about the process of transcription and how DNA makes a copy of RNA. Remember that the genes are on the chromosomes in the nucleus, and there are sequences of A's, G's, T's, and C's that code for proteins. The proteins themselves are synthesized or made in the cytoplasm at the ribosomes. So how do we get the codes on DNA inside the nucleus to the ribosomes on the cytoplasm? The answer is messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is going to copy the genes on DNA and be used at the ribosome out in the, new, out in the cytoplasm. Remember RNA is very similar to DNA. It has a ribose sugar instead of deoxyribose as a sugar in the backbone of the RNA molecule. The nitrogen bases are the same for adenine, guanine, and cytosine. However, there is one difference. There's uracil instead of thymine. There is no thymine in, in RNA. Anytime you see thymine, you know you're dealing with DNA. Anytime you see uracil, you know you're dealing with RNA. Transcription. Transcription is using a set of DNA sequences on a gene on the chromosomes and making a complementary RNA molecule. The enzyme that we're going to be using for this is called RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase makes RNA. DNA polymerase makes DNA. RNA polymerase is used during transcription. DNA polymerase was used during replication. Now the first step in transcription is for RNA polymerase to bind to a promoter region on DNA's template strand. This is re represented here on this picture. Then RNA polymerase is going to transcribe the gene until it reaches the terminator. Once the RNA polymerase hits the terminator sequence on DNA, it's going to detach and transcription is done. Here we have an expanded view. Here we have RNA polymerase, the enzyme that makes RNA. The pink represents RNA. The DNA, two sides. The side that's being used to make our messenger RNA is called the template strand of DNA. The side that's complementary to the template strand is called the coding strand. Now remember, T normally codes for A in uh, DNA, and it also codes for A in messenger RNA. A codes for T in DNA, but when we're make, making messenger RNA, there are no thymines, there's no Ts, so we'll replace it by Us. So any Ts in messenger RNA are replaced by Us. G codes for C, both in messenger RNA and DNA. G for C, T for A, T for A. And this process here is called elongation, or making our messenger RNA transcript longer. Once the RNA polymerase reaches the terminator sequence, it detaches, represented here, and the um, RNA transcript is complete. After we make our messenger RNA, there are some areas that we need to cut out. Now in DNA, we have something called exons and something called introns. Introns are non-coding regions of DNA, and they might have some regulatory function, but they're not directly used for making proteins. When you do transcription, you transcribe both the exons and introns in your messenger RNA. Now we've got to cut out and remove the parts that are non-coding. So all these introns, represented by pink here, are removed by an enzyme, uh, by a uh, protein called a spliceosome. Once these introns are removed, we're going to splice together or combine together the exons, which are the coding regions. Exon, 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 splice together to make our finished messenger RNA. So our finished messenger RNA is all going to be exons or coding sequences. Introns have been spliced out and have a regulatory function in turning on other genes. At that point, um, in eukaryotes, we're going to add something called a 5' prime cap and a poly A tail, a bunch of adenines. Basically, this is just going to protect the uh, messenger RNA from enzymes that break down RNA. And then the finished RNA will leave the nucleus and enter the cytoplasm, where it will link up to a, a ribosome. All right, I'm going to get some notes now. Transcription. Step one, RNA polymerase binds to the promoter region of a gene on DNA on the 
template strand. Create inscription step two. RNA polymerase enzyme adds RNA nucleotides of AHG, C's, and U's to RNA that are complementary to the DNA nucleotides in a process called elongation. Step three. When RNA polymerase hits the terminator sequence of DNA of A's, G's, T's, and U's, the, um, the mRNA will detach as well as RNA polymerase. Step four, spliceosomes cut out non-reading introns. Now a splice is when you um, tie two pieces of rope or wire together to make it continuous again. Spliceosomes are gonna cut out the non-coding introns and we're going to splice together the exons. So on messenger RNA, we're only going to leave the exons, the codes for proteins in messenger RNA. The introns have a regulatory function to turn on other genes, and we're not sure exactly how those introns work to turn on other genes. There's a Nobel Prize waiting for someone that can figure out how introns turn on other genes. And step five, messenger RNA given a five prime cap and a poly A tail in eukaryotes before leaving the nucleus. This is called RNA processing. RNA processing also includes cutting out the introns. And here we have a picture in the bottom. You can pause at this point if you need more time. Here we have the DNA. We have the coding part and the template part. In the part one, the coding and template parts were uh, reversed on accident. The promoter region, this is the place where RNA polymerase first binds to DNA. The gene is the sequence of DNA, also called the transcription unit, that, um, that codes for a protein, polypeptide. RNA polymerase here, you can see it working in this direction toward the terminator. As the RNA polymerase reads the, uh, the codes on the template strand here, we're going to be making our messenger RNA, which of course is single-stranded. Now, when we do this transcription, we're transcribing both introns and exons, we're going to have to cut out those introns later. Once RNA polymerase hits the terminator region on DNA, the RNA polymerase will detach and our messenger RNA transcript is complete. All right, we'll pause at this point, give you time to copy that picture now. This ends transcription of DNA. Now, if you're in AP Biology, there's an additional two things that you should know for page five here. Remember that prokaryotes include bacteria, and bacteria are prokaryotes. There is no form of life that's prokaryotic that's not bacteria. There is no bacteria that's anything other than a prokaryote. And prokaryotes don't have a nucleus. So during translation, when we make our proteins, it can start before transcription is complete. So even though you have your... Um, your messenger RNA being made, there's mRNA, and let's say this is our DNA. Remember in bacteria, the DNA is a circle shaped in bacteria. So that's basically kind of how it looks. And this is DNA. Now let's pretend over here we have our RNA polymerase making our messenger RNA from a gene. Let's just call that a gene. Even before transcription is done, ribosomes can attach to the messenger RNA and start making our protein. Realistic here. Because the messenger RNA doesn't have to leave a nucleus in bacteria, the ribosome can attach right to that messenger RNA sequence even before transcription is done, and we can start making our protein. This is a difference between us and bacteria. Bacteria can have both translation and transcription happening at the same time, and that's number one here. Also in, um, in bacteria, in prokaryotes, there's no introns. There's not any non-coding regions, so you don't have to cut those out. 
it's all exons and bacteria. All right, let's go back to our uh, PowerPoint. So we're done with transcription. We processed our RNA. We cut out those introns. We added a five prime cap and a poly A tail. Now the finished messenger RNA is going to leave the nucleus and enter the cytoplasm. And this is where translation occurs at the ribosome in the cytoplasm, making our polypeptide protein from messenger RNA. Here we have a uh, slide of the genes, sequences of DNA. There's many genes on a chromosome. Here we have transcription of the DNA. AAA, after transcription, codes for UUU on RNA. And then this RNA codon, a codon, once again, is a set of three nucleotides that codes for one amino acid. We're going to use our genetic code, next class, to figure out what uh, this codon brings in as far as amino acids on the protein. The process of messenger RNA coding for the amino acid and bringing it in and putting together our protein is called translation. Here we have transcription again. We have our RNA polymerase. We have our growing messenger RNA. We have our two sides of DNA. Remember, transcription happens in the nucleus. This is a review of what happens in, during transcription or after transcription. We are going to process our messenger RNA by removing out any introns represented here. See how the introns get cut out in the final messenger RNA. And also we're going to add a 5' prime cap and a poly A tail, protected from enzymes. Remember in bacteria there is no nucleus, so they can do transcription and translation at the same time. DNA makes a messenger RNA copy through transcription. Messenger RNA processed leaves the nucleus. Then messenger RNA hooks up to a ribosome using the codons, nucleotides on the messenger RNA. We're going to string together the correct order of amino acids in our protein. Remember that T codes for A on messenger RNA. A normally codes for T on DNA. All T's are replaced by U's in RNA. C codes for G, G for C, and so forth and so on. Once we have our messenger RNA nucleotides in the right order, we can figure out our, our amino acids in the protein using the genetic code. You need a genetic code to figure out the amino acids. You won't have to memorize that. Remember a codon is a set of three nucleotides. We have UGG, that's a codon. One codon codes for one amino acid. Three RNA nucleotides are in one codon. So for three amino acids, you need three codons or nine nucleotides. Make sure you understand that. All right, we're going to get to our notes on translation now. This is page 5 in translation, going from messenger RNA to protein. Step 1, messenger RNA binds to ribosomes in the cytoplasm. Here we have our ribosome, two parts of the ribosome, combining to the AUG codon, start codon, on messenger RNA. This is called initiation. Ribosomes, by the way, consist of an rRNA and a protein. And then we have step two. Here we have a transfer RNA. Transfer RNA consists of a amino acid attached to an anticodon. Here we have the anticodon listed. This amino acid is methionine, and that's listed here. Here's another transfer RNA with a amino acid and anticodon, another amino acid with a, another anticodon. Here we have our messenger RNA ribosome. Transfer RNAs bring in amino acids based on the anticodon's complementary messenger RNA codons. So here we have AUG complementary to UAC on the anticodon of tRNA to bring in the first amino acid, methionine. 
and every three nucleotides on messenger RNA is a codon that brings in a different amino acid. This part is called elongation. And then we have the last step, step three. Amino acids are linked together by covalent bonds to make the polypeptide protein until ribosome reaches a stop codon and translation is complete. Protein now folds and is ready to be used. This ends part two of chapter 17 notes. Go ahead and pause at this time and copy this down.